And it's funny, um, we always ask a question just to break the ice here on the show, and it has a little bit to do with Miller Lite, sort of. I always ask, what is your favorite drink? That's always my first question. So either what are you drinking right now or what is your favorite drink right now? What's your go-to? This is just straight bourbon. No, it's water. Um, <laughs> I'm not a very interesting man. I'm not much of a party animal. My favorite drink. I love my iced coffee in the morning. I love a Diet Coke in the afternoon. Bam, bam. Thank you, ma'am. I hear you. I know uh, that's not a well, we, we got a little <laughs> bit in common there. I love the iced coffee when I wake up. I have to have that coffee because it kind of kind of stems oh. that the, the 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 appetite a little bit makes me have helps me skip breakfast, right? But well, yeah, it does. It's definitely an appetite suppressant. It's also the best part of my day. I look forward to having my coffee because I feel jazzed after, and yeah. Yeah, you feel like you're ready to tackle anything then. And it's... I do. Isn't it so sad when you're out of coffee too, though? Like, oh, man. I will tell you, I've almost cried sometimes where I'm looking forward to my coffee in the morning and I open the fridge and it's like empty. And I'm like, why? Why didn't yeah. you notice that mm -hmm. it was empty? Yeah. Yeah, it's like Worst. putting off getting gas till the next day, right? Well, I'll just do it tomorrow, ah. right? <laughs> and then you always pay for it. <laughs> You always pay for it every time. Absolutely. All right. So before we get started with some of the serious stuff, I kind of wanted to congratulate you first on everything you got going on, um, all the things you've done, all the cool things happening to you. And we're going to get into all of those things here on the show. I wish we had about nine hours with you. I have so much to ask um, and all the stuff you have going on. Um, I mean, huge. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a fan of yours, also a friend, and I'm uh, super proud of you. So um, here, here we go. Let's start with songwriting um, and music. It's literally in your blood, literally. Your dad is literally, in my opinion, um, Nashville royalty when it comes to songwriting and music in general. Tell me the role that your dad has had in your music now and your writing um, in general. I mean, both of my parents were in the music industry, so I really did grow up around it. I grew up in studios, and I, I don't know if it's nature versus nurture. I don't know if I was born with it because both of them were musical and had me, or if it's because I kind of grew up around it. I couldn't tell you. Maybe both. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I always wanted to, to do music. I always wanted to write songs and, and bring them to life. And my, my dad was the best songwriter that I'll ever know, truly. And I'm, I'm not 100% biased, I'm a little bit biased, but truly he was a great, great songwriter. He wrote, um, you know, great traditional country music. And in my book, that's some of the best songwriting that there's ever been. So yeah, and my, my mom has always been a um, huge, huge supporter of mine. I could not be where I am today without her. Um, you know, she taught me how to sing. She taught me how to, to be on stage and entertain and build a set list. And um, so both my parents have been an integral part of my journey as far. As I say, I did not know that about your mom. So it was almost the perfect, almost the perfect situation for you um, as, a young, as a young performer to be, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, uh, no pressure, right? Right, and yeah, wow. I can't imagine. <laughs> Success in their own right. Yeah, yeah, definitely had some incredible uh, training wheels. So when we grow up, when we're young people, you know, regardless of what we're growing up around, whatever that is becomes normal to us, right? Whatever it is. If you grow up in the world of wrestling, then being a pro wrestler is just going to seem like it's normal. If you're the son of Tom Cruise and being a global superstar – just seems normal. Right. So yeah. when did you realize, because I know there is a realization process at some point in your life when you realize that actually isn't normal. Did, when, when, when did that happen for you and what was kind of your reaction to that? I actually think it was way later than it should have been. I think it was... I think it was when I really started co-writing and I wrote by myself for like 10 years before I even dipped into co-writing. I think it was when I started collaborating with other people and I realized that I kind of had this baseline, which was a blessing that a lot of people didn't have this baseline understanding of like the business side and also just how to write a song and what happens. And, um, Kind of like, you know, how people say, like, I forget more than you'll ever know, or, or that kind of expression a little bit like that. Like, I just like, Oh wow. Like, I kind of knew that at 12 years old that they just learned that like, isn't that cool? Yeah. Uh, but also wow, 
that's not normal. But everybody has that, you know, I, I'm not bragging. Everybody's got something that they're, um, you know, more knowledgeable at than, than me. But I think I learned some stuff early on that other people maybe learned later about the music world. And there's a lot about the nuts and bolts, I imagine, too, of the music world, the engineering process, the production side of things that you probably learned way younger than a normal artist would learn. And that's going to be a huge benefit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I, I remember somebody asking me, like, what's the difference between a publisher and a producer? And I was like, well, just because they both start with P's doesn't mean they're even like close to the same job. But like, you know, I just kind of grew up around around it a little bit. My parents talking about people. And so, yeah, I guess the music industry, at least, was always kind of I kind of understood the basics of it anyway. Yeah, I don't claim to understand the heck is going on but i know the basics <laughs> and so that terminology existed for you at a young age stuff like song plugging and on hold and cuts and demos and Backing. master tapes and so all of that stuff i mean there's artists that are signed to big labels today that probably don't know the stuff you knew at six years old when it comes to that kind of stuff and like i said this is a huge benefit i think and it definitely shines through in your work today um as an adult and um, you know, serious artist in your own right, obviously. Um, other than your parents, what other influences kind of shaped your early musical um, ears, I, so, I, guess, I guess I should say? Well, I always loved music, and I know everybody says that, but I really did on like a deep level. I studied it, um, but I didn't really decide that I wanted to do music as a career until I was like uh, 13 when I discovered John Mayer. And okay. I just kind of had this like, moment i just was like oh my god that's what i'm gonna do um so i always say john mayer and keith urban are my two main my, my main guys my heroes my influences and um there's a million others in between i was a huge matchbox 20 fan maroon 5 i mean jason mraz katie tunstall michelle branch like all these like 2000s pop singer songwriters uh and then eventually i kind of found my way back to to country my roots but there's a lot of guitar yeah. influence there, I'm hearing then. A lot of guitar influence. A lot of guitar influence. I have a lot of guitars. Um, I certainly don't shred like those guys, but um, but everything I do always starts with a guitar. So, yeah. So um, we talked about the fact that you're a second-generation performer, artist, musician, songwriter, all of that. What kind of pressure do you feel? Like you did say no pressure, kind of joking about it, but there has to be actual pressure there those, those are some footstep big footsteps you know yeah i mean there's certainly no pressure from them i don't think from my right. parents uh, i think if anything they would have loved for me to not do music because it's just it's very well you, you know the music yeah. industry is brutal yep. um but i put a lot of pressure on myself you know especially when i walk around town touting that both of my parents were in country music it's like okay kid well i hope you don't suck because now your name's attached to their legacy yep. you know so uh, so I, I really am i've been hustling for a long time just to try to do something to make them proud you know that's that's really what it comes down to so it's just a uh, kind of a small motto just don't suck right just don't suck please don't suck I up every day, man, and i'm like lord <laughs> <laughs> well you don't let to really i suck <laughs> you have certainly accomplished that that's for sure um 